Hello everybody! Today I'm going to be doing a moon and stars design using buttons and a 5 inch canvas. The materials I'll be using today is Mod Podge, some buttons, some acrylic stars. You can see these are really shiny here. I also have some holographic glitter. I have some seed beads. And I have some other glitter. I really like this glitter, but because it's a nighttime design, I think I'll use the dark glitter. And then I also have these round flat back pearls. And in order to simulate the night sky, I will be painting this canvas a dark blue. So yeah. Okay, so you're seeing me paint this canvas here, and uh, you'll notice I'm doing uh, broad strokes, uh, and I'm trying to get the paint as even as possible. So you're going to want to do uh, even broad strokes in different directions to make sure that the paint lays smoothly and there's no ridges on it. It's helpful to go a little bit slower to do this, and you'll notice that I go up horizontally and then I sort of just correct a couple of ridges here and there. This paint will take a decent amount of time to dry and I coated it three times. Um, so that will be the bulk of the waiting for this craft. Here is my nicely painted canvas and I want to put my glitter stars on it to simulate the night sky, so I'll be using some of this Mod Podge I have here, and I'm going to paint it on a thin layer um, so that I can just stick some of that glitter to there. Again, you'll see me doing some broad strokes uh, just to make sure the Mod Podge is smooth evenly and there are no ridges. Mod Podge is very shiny, so you'll be able to see any of these ridges or inconsistencies, so just do your best to make it smooth. Again, I really like the clear stars, but this is, oh, I just put some hearts on it, you know? We'll, we'll work with that, it'll be okay. <laughs> but I just put some of the dark stars, just because this is the night sky and I thought it would be a little more dim. And then I'm going to take a very generous amount of these larger holographic stars and uh, put them on. I love star glitter and I always choose to use more of it. Alrighty, so here is my canvas and um, oh, you can see where I've picked off the star glitter, I mean the heart glitter here. <laughs> I'll be using a moon design that I found online and I cut out. I made sure that the moon design was smaller than my canvas. This canvas is a 5 inch canvas, so I just made sure the moon was 4 inches across and that left me with a little bit of space all the way around it. And then I positioned it how I wanted it to look on my canvas. I'm using a soft pencil because I don't want to scratch the paint and the Mod Podge. Alrighty, and then we're just going to start putting buttons on. This is a long process. Uh, for me, it was very sort of meditative, but you want to start with the largest of your buttons to fill up any big space on the inside of your moon um, and because these large buttons um, take up so much space you can sort of place them wherever you'd like. Um, I wanted to space them out a little bit more and from there you'll go smaller and smaller until you reach the smallest of your beads or buttons or embellishments in which you'll use those to create a really clean line around the entire moon and that'll make the, the craft seem really finished. So yeah, here's a time lapse of me making buttons into a moon. Oh, before I go, 
there was some stars that I wanted to put as extra stars in the night sky, but I decided to put them in the moon and, you know, art is subjective, so do what you think is right. Okay, so you've seen me transition to using these tweezers and one of the techniques that I found really helpful was taking the tweezers on the edge of a button and holding the button and then dragging the bottom half of the button through the Mod Podge. It keeps the tweezers from getting glue on them, but it picks up enough glue to hold the entire button to the canvas, and it also helps to place the button in this way. I found that really helpful in order to place the buttons properly. Okay, now I'm starting to do the edge of my moon, and I've started with the inside here, but I'm really trying to keep the glue on the penciled line that we did in order to um, make sure that we get a very clean line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly put in small beads in all of the cracks just to fill that in. Alrighty, and now that I've done the outside edge, 
excuse me, the inside edge. I'm going to be going to do the outside edge. And you'll see me occasionally using a pencil here to fill in the gap with Mod Podge. I didn't have a toothpick on hand, but uh, the pencil was what I had on hand. And I can always sharpen it to get all the glue off. Alrighty, we are nearing the end of this craft and you'll notice that the moon is very white and opaque and that's okay, that just means the glue hasn't yet dried and what's going to happen in the next couple of days is the glue is going to cure and become clear um, and the glue that's in contact with the air will do that first but all of the glue under any buttons will not cure for um, a day or so so yeah and this is what it looks like when it's all finished you can see the stars and the sky through the buttons all of the Mod Podge is clear and it looks really pretty I chose to put mine on the diagonal so that the moon was um, upright and I think that looks really good Thank you so much for watching.